Today I will be starting a series on Noah's Flood. I'm going to be testing and see if Noah's Flood is real. Unfortunately, we cannot do the same for creation because it gives no predictions. It's just God did it. Noah's Flood, however, there are several predictions which we can make and put to the test, and then we know that it is real. So far, there are ten geologic predictions and two biologic predictions that must be true in order for Noah's Flood to be true. Even if one was found false, it is the same as disproving Noah's Flood completely. So let's begin. 1. A global uniform finding upward sequence of the entire geological cone would be under a hydrodynamic sorting. Thus, the heaviest particles would set first. Number two, a preponderance of turbinites. Turbinites are common in the oceans, whereas waters deposit sediments all the time. This would be, of course, also a, a global thing, not just one, uh, bits and pieces here and there. Number three, obliterated fossils. Noah's flood would be like a higher energy environment, would actually prevent fossils from forming because they would destroy them first instead of burying them. It'd be like expecting a rabbit to survive in a cement mixer full of bricks. It just plain wouldn't happen. Number four, obliterated Icano fossils. Footprints and burrows cannot be the result of hydrodynamic sorting. It's just not possible to get a formation of raindrops or the presence of bioturbination, such as uh, worms burrowing through the dirt. Number five, a lack of coal. Coal is formed by the compaction of peat. To get one meter of coal, you need between 30 and 100 meters of peat. In the event of a global flood, any swampland would have been washed away and completely intermixed with flood sediments not to mention the serious lack of time for high-grade coal to form. Number six, a lack of oil. Petroleum is formed by hydrocarbons being literally baked by geothermal gradient and escaping into surrounding rock. Number seven, a lack of limestone. Limestone is mostly uh, calcium carbonate with argonite, though some calcite during some periods of Earth history. It is generally made up of platonic tests, but can be precipitated out of warm water to form odioids or be made up of cemented coral skeletons. If a global flood occurred, all the platonic tests would have been thoroughly intermixed with other sedimentary particles. Thus, lime mud is the best you can get. Number 8. A lack of dolstone. Dolstone rock is made of dolomite. Dolomite is formed when limestone is infiltrated by brines and very gradual cal calcium ions are replaced by magnesium ions. This takes endless amounts of time because limestone is effectively impermeable. Dolomite cannot be preci precipitated at the STP, so brine infiltration is the only process which can produce outside of a lab setting. And of course, if there's no limestone, then there's no dolstone. Number nine, a lack of subaerial rocks. These are form formations that are a result of wind depositing the sediments, such as from sand dunes. Number ten, no angular uniconformity. An angular uniconformity is a special type of uniconformity where the rotation has occurred. This requires time for initial deposition, lithification, rotation, erosion, more deposition, and more lithification. Needless to say, this is inconsistent with a global flood. Number 11. The entire animal kingdom would have genetic bottlenecks. The severity of the bottlenecks would be dependent on whether the animal was clean or unclean, if the flood in the Bible was, is correct. This will also be true for humans if everyone is descended of Noah's family. Number 12. All migration patterns, both human and animal, will all point to a common point which all came from, namely the Middle East. 
In this series, I will explain in detail, point by point, why each and every one is completely wrong, demonstrating once and for all, no educated or honest person can ever take Noah's flood seriously. Thank you for watching and please stay tuned.